Hey, scientists, thanks for joining me for the cell cycle notes, interphase, mitosis, and cytokinesis. This note set does come with a set of slides, and those slides are available for you in Schoology. We're going to start with talking about DNA and chromosomes. DNA is in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. We know this, that our nucleus uh, is what houses, keeps it safe, keeps your genetic information safe. It contains all of your genetic information. Genetic information, what does that mean? That means your information like anything from how many fingers do you have? What color are your eyes? What's the color of your hair? The texture of your hair? Everything that is you, every single thing about you is here in this genetic information. DNA is condensed. The word condense means to kind of squish and bring together. Okay, so instead of it taking up a lot of room, you can condense it down, right, or concentrate it into a smaller space. So DNA is condensed into chromosomes to prepare for cell division. This is a chromosome here on the right. It has this characteristic eight, uh, X shape, and they are bound together here in the center by a central mirror. Notice now here on the right-hand side, this helix shape. This is how your, your genetic information is normally uh, situated and set up in a double helix. However, instead of having these really long strands all over the place, what we're going to do is tighten it up, wind it up really, really tightly so that it's all easier to access during cell division. So what are chromosomes made up of? Chromosomes are made of two identical parts, and we call these sister chromatids. The sister chromatids are connected, as I had mentioned and shown you in this diagram here on the right. They're connected by the central mirror. So you have sister chromatids one and two to make one chromosome bound or joined together at the center by a central mirror. Now let's take a look at our next piece, the cell cycle. When we talk about the cell cycle, I think it's going to make a little bit more sense why we want to condense our genetic information and make them into this X shape. The cell cycle, when a cell reaches its size limit, remember a limit is a max, it will either stop growing or it is going to divide. Cells divide for the purposes of reproduction, replacement of lost or dead cells, and to promote growth of the structure in which they are located. Your cells don't live for infinite amount of days or years. And each cell, depending on where it is in your body, has a particular lifespan. And we'll explore some of that together in class as well, because uh, it's really interesting. So it will be the replacement of loss or dead cells. And to promote, as I had mentioned, growth of the structure in which they are located. The series of events, that means this happens over multiple steps that take place in a cell to allow it to grow and divide. This is called the cell cycle. The eukaryotic cell has three main stages. And we're going to explore them here below. So let me move this up. Our first stage is called interphase, and your cell's gonna spend a lot of time in this particular phase. The cell in this stage grows and prepares to divide. So it's just growing and getting ready. G1, also known as gap one, the cell grows. S is for synthesis. 
Synthesis means to make. What am I making? I'm making DNA copies. Okay, so DNA replicates to ensure. That means to make sure. DNA replicates to make sure that both of your new cells have a complete copy. This makes a lot of sense. If I make a whole new cell, right, because this cell cycle is for cell division. If my cell is at the nearing the end of its life and I need to replace it with another one. Well, if I only give it half of it, its instructions, that cell is not going to be successful. So we need to make sure that during S phase, that DNA is copied so that your new cells that are made after cell division have a complete understanding, a complete copy of what they need to do. G2, also known as GAP2. Synthesis of more organelles. Remember that organelles are your little organs, nucleus, mitochondria, your Golgi bodies. We need to make sure that your new cells have a copy of those too. To make sure that everything is in order, you have what are called checkpoints. Checkpoints, this is like a quality check. Okay, so it's a quality check for DNA <clears throat> damage. So you want to make sure that DNA is good. Make sure that DNA is not damaged. So we're going to check for DNA, cell size, nutrients. We want to ensure that the that healthy daughter cells are made. G2, I mean, excuse me, G1, G2. G0, this is the rest and repair state. So we want to make sure that everything is good to go. We don't want to make copies of uh, damaged or no good cells. We have G1. S is for synthesis. I'm making more organelles. G2. And all three of these pieces of this diagram are for interphase. All of these belong to interphase. Look at how long. And if you're wondering, well, what is this actual diagram? This is a diagram basically of your cell division, mitosis, cytokinesis. And we'll talk a little bit about what those are in a second. This is your cell division or your cell life cycle. Notice how much time your cell is spending just hanging out, growing, preparing to divide. Your cell has not divided yet, and that's very important. All three of these particular pieces of interphase belong to interphase, number one, but they all just have to do with growing, making copies, developing, and then checking to make sure that everything is good to go before we divide. So a lot goes into your cell, lots of preparation. Our second, uh, your second phase or stage is mitosis. And in mitosis, your nucleus divides. Once my nucleus has divided, I'm gonna go to my third and last stage. which is cytokinesis. Cyto means cell, right? Like cytoplasm. So your cytoplasm divides, producing two genetically identical daughter cells. I'm gonna go ahead and underline this. This is important. I am producing two genetically. So that means their genetic DNA information is identical. It is the same. Two genetically identical daughter cells are produced through mitosis. So I'm going to make myself a note here. What does mitosis produce? Two identical daughter cells, two identical set daughter cells. I'm gonna use a different color here. 
here, let's get blue. So I want to finish this diagram. If you're having some trouble with filling in these boxes on your Google Doc, make sure that you are double clicking on the box to open up the drawing and then click one time to enter the text box. This is mitosis and cell division, sorry. Cytokinesis is this super small little window right here. Boop. And I need, let's use, ooh, let's use this purple. PMAT is what we're going to explore next. So this window, this yellow window that I have outlined for you is actual cell division. And cytokinesis is the end, is when you've actually split your cytoplasm and you now have your two daughter cells. What's interesting, I'm here at Cell Cycle Facts, what's really interesting is that a eukaryotic cell is going to spend most of its time in interphase, and we saw that in the diagram. It's going to spend a lot of time there. It's just growing, developing. It is not actively dividing. It is only preparing. A typical animal cell takes 12 to 14 hours to complete the cell cycle, which actually is not, you know, sorry, 24, 12 to 24 hours to complete the cell cycle, which is not long at all. So in about one day, you can actually, one cell, mind you, this is just one cell. A typical animal cell in one day can go through and make another copy of itself. Prokaryotic cells, however, such as bacteria, reproduce by different method. They don't have to go through this. Instead, they use what's called binary fission, which is pretty cool. So instead of them doing this whole preparation, getting ready to divide, PMAT, which are your steps in cell division, and then C, actively dividing with your dividing uh, your cytoplasm and pinching off to form two new cells. Instead, a bacterial cell is just going to, if I try to doodle, it's going to just pinch itself off and create copies that way. Mitosis. Mitosis only occurs in somatic cells. Somatic cells. These are your body cells. This includes skin cells, cheek cells, lining of your intestines, anything you can think of that is not a sex cell. And I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this. Anything that is not a sex cell. You only have two options for your sex cells, either sperm or egg. So anything that is not sperm or egg, anything you can think of, liver cells, um, anything you can find in your eyeballs, hair cells, okay, anything like that. Anything that goes into that that is not sperm and egg, those are all somatic cells. Okay, those are all your body cells. Those can do mitosis. Let's use this blue. There are four stages of mitosis. And they're actually here on the right-hand side. These are the doodles here. We are going to remember them using PMAT, which I had mentioned earlier in the diagram um, above. PMAT. P is for prophase. P is for prophase. M is for metaphase. M is for metaphase. A is for anaphase. A is for anaphase. And then last but not least, T. T is for telophase. 
oops, T is for telophase. That's an O, sorry. Telophase. So let's take a look at these little doodles here on the right. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, as we had written over here on the left. P is for pro, think P is for prep. P is for prophase, P is for prep. I'm going to kind of put a little dot under my P. P is for prep. All I'm doing is preparing. I'm preparing. M is for metaphase. M is for middle. Look at how all of my chromosomes are lined up here in the middle. Think A for anaphase. A for apart. Look. My chromosomes are now being pulled apart. They're being separated. T is for telophase. Think T for two. Now we can visibly see that we have two nuclei formed. See these little, you can see the nuclear membrane has formed. Notice we don't have two complete cells yet. That is cytokinesis. We have not split the cytoplasm, but I can visibly see, and I'll, I'll outline this, two nuclear membranes have formed. And I can see that I have two sets of genetic information visible within those two nuclei. Nuclei is a plural of nucleus. Do not conf don't confuse telophase with cytokinesis. Okay, cytokinesis is the division of the cytoplasm where I now have two completely on their own separate identical cells, daughter cells. Okay, we don't have that yet. They're still joined. They're still joined at the cytoplasm. So let's go ahead and explore our phases in a little bit more detail. Okay, so I had mentioned P for prophase, P for prep. What color did I use for prophase? Blue. Sorry about that. Prophase. So what's going on in prophase in my cell? So here I have a diagram of what's going on in your cell. So first, your nucleolus is going to disappear. Your DNA, um, your DNA is going to start condensing into chromosomes. The nuclear envelope disintegrates. That means to fall apart. No longer be there. Okay, so it disintegrates, it's gone. Okay, so my, my nuclear envelope is gone. Your DNA is kind of exposed, if you will. DNA condenses into that chromosome characteristic X shape where you have your sister chromatids joined by a centromere. That's here. That's this diagram right here. We're not going to worry about this. Metaphase. We said M is for metaphase. M is for middle. Okay, M is for metaphase. M is for middle. The spindle fibers. I'm going to go ahead and make a little note here. It's a little star. Here are your spindle fibers. Okay, so your spindle fibers. Doop, 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 doop. They're going to attach here to your centromeres. Your, your, um, your spindle fibers are what are stemming off of your centrioles. We've seen centrioles before when we went over our cell organelle pieces. Your centrioles kind of this tubular shape. 
and they are involved in cell division, as shown here. Okay, so you have these little fibers that branch out, and they're going to attach to the centromeres to aid in cell division. Okay, so metaphase, chromosomes line up along the equator, right? So like the equator on Earth is the middle, that line that divides the middle of the Earth. So spindle fibers attached to the centromeres of the sister chromatids. I forgot to, uh, to write that one in. Chromatids. Chromosomes line up along the equator, which is your middle of your cell. You have a, uh, a spindle checkpoint. And this is to make sure that your chromosomes are attached. And if they're good to go, then I can proceed to anaphase. A is for anaphase. A is for a part. What color did I use for anaphase? Blue. A is for a part. The sister chromatids are pulled apart. Okay. So they're going to... They're going to be pulled apart to where now they have this kind of shape instead of that X shape. See, they're getting pulled here. <clears throat> chromosomes, the individual chromosomes, since they're being pulled apart, our chromatids are pulled apart. These spindle fibers are going to begin to shorten right here. So kind of like, a, like it's contracting. So instead of being the long fibers to attach, they begin to contract in to pull in those little pieces. So as they pull it in, we can characterize this as your chromosomes are being pulled towards opposite poles. Or sides of your cell, right? So I'm pulling them onto either side. And this is to ensure that when I go through cell division that I have my genetic information in and ready in those other cells. Okay? If it's lost right in here in the middle, that's a problem, right? Because then when I go through cell division, I risk losing some of my genetic information. So to make sure that it's all there, it's going to be pulled towards the polar opposite ends of that cell. T is for telophase. T is for two. The chromosomes then reach, they've reached their destination on the opposite sides of the poles. So they're not traveling anymore. They're there. Okay. In um, our nuclear envelope is going to reform. All right. So I'm going to circle this again. Remember now we can see the nuclei. Nucleoli reappears. Chromosomes, then they relax. It's done now. They decondense. Okay, so they're no longer all kinds of uh, condensed and squished up into that characteristic X shape. Now they can relax and unwind. But you're not done with cell division. In telophase, they're still joined. You need to have cytokinesis happen in order for you to complete your cell division. Cytokinesis is your complete end, okay, to your, your cell division. To complete cell division, the cytoplasm must divide. In animal cells, the cytoplasm pinches in half to form, again, two genetically identical daughter cells. Okay, so what's important about these daughter cells is that they each have the same number of chromosomes as your original parent cell. Remember, they are identical, identical, okay? So they each have the same. I'm gonna go ahead and put some stars around here. This is really important. Okay, the same number of chromosomes as your original parent. 
in plant cells, a cell plate will form. Okay, so right here, this is a this is a um, diagram of a plant cell. How do I know? Because I can see the cell wall. I'm going to go ahead and circle this right here. Cell wall. We have this characteristic uh, square shape of a plant cell. Okay, so we will see a plate begin to form. This is how it divides into a new cell. Okay, so it's going to form in between your daughter nuclei. <clears throat> new cell wall forms. Okay, so this is how uh, it looks in a plant cell. So that would complete your cell division. So when you're done in mitosis, or this is mitosis, mitosis will create or end with two identical daughter cells that have the same number of chromosomes as your parent cell. Now cancer cells. Cancer is a disorder, right? So that means, all right, order, is nice, neat, disorder, chaos, right? So it's, something is wrong. Cancer is a disorder in which some of the body's own cells lose the ability to control cell growth. This is known as uncontrolled cell growth, uncontrolled. Cancer cells do not enter checkpoints. So because of that, they don't get regulated. Cyclins are special proteins that regulate the timing of the cell cycle in eukaryotic cells. So here on the right, go ahead and, oh, wrong way. On the right, we have a diagram of normal cells. However, cancer cells. Notice that my cytoplasm, that's the watery air, the watery uh, stuff inside my cell, very small. You can see multiple nuclei, multiple, um, just look, it's just so condensed. You have so much stuff going on. Very coarse chromatin, very, very, very condensed. Taking up all this space here in, in, this, in this cell and notice how misshapen it is. And notice how they're all squished together. Because it's uncontrolled cell growth, it is very common for them to take up so much space in an area that normally would not. Notice how comfortable these cells are. We're going to explore cancer in a little bit more detail in the days to come. Okay, so we will be taking a look at some, some cancers. How can, we, how can we compare normal cells? in normal samples versus cancerous cells. So we'll be looking at that, okay, in some uh, animal cells. Don't forget to answer your what do you understand questions. There are two questions. Number one, what are the three parts, oops, let me move this over. What are the three parts of the cell cycle? And, oh, so there's two part. And what happens in each piece? Number two, write the four phases of mitosis in order including a key word for each. And that concludes our notes on the cell cycle. We're going to be getting some practice in this. And as I mentioned, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some things such as cancer and compare them. And we're going to practice identifying some cells, meaning can we identify which phase of mitosis a cell is in by looking at what's going on in the cell. Okay, scientists, thank you so much for joining me. And I'll